So, uh, so let's get started. I think uh, we'll start a little bit with an intro to EdChat Interactive. Uh, EdChat Interactive was started by uh, myself, by uh, Tom Whitby and Steve Anderson. Tom and Steve were two of the people who started EdChat back about seven years ago. And we all thought that this would be a great way for educators to share best practices with each other that was going to be better than, say, a talking head video. And our format is going to be that our leader, who tonight is Katie Ann Will, is going to talk for a few minutes about a topic and then let you break into groups to, um, to discuss among yourselves and then, and then bring, bring a couple people back to the stage to talk about what they did in their groups. So that's the, uh, the theory behind EdChat Interactive. And then, um, and then I also wanted to let you know that we're doing another EdChat Interactive on Thursday, this one with the inimitable Sherry Crofit. Uh, sh let me just, um, uh, Sherry is, um, is an incredible presenter and an author, and she, uh, she authored a section of, of the book, Inevitable. And um, Inevitable is about uh, customized, personalized learning. So I think that's going to be another great, great discussion. And uh, you know that you can always register for these discussions at colon slash slash www.edchatinteractive.org. So, um, so I, I see there's a question, but I'm going to uh, go to the next the the next area first. Um, maybe uh, Harold can can check on the question. So, um, so one of the reasons that we're um, well, I actually so so let me talk about one one more thing with the platform before we get to the real reason why why we chose uh, Shindig, and that is uh, the 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 one more thing: move your cursor over the slide, and just in case it's a little bit too small on your screen, if you click in the lower right hand corner, you can make a slide full screen, and then you see that there's a little X on the top right hand side of your of your screen. And if you uh, click on that X, it'll come back onto the stage. And that's one way that, that uh, you can make sure that the, the slides are visible to you. So again, let me, um, <clears throat> so let me uh, describe the, the, the one reason why we really are using Shindig. That is all these icons of other people. And, um, and one of the things that you can do is you, if you click on another person's icon, you can have a video chat with that other person. And you can have up to three, you can actually have up to five people in a video chat. So in order to practice that, uh, let's do an exercise. I'd like every one of you to click on one person's icon, um, or you could three people, if that's what you want. And I'd like you to ask each other two questions. First, where are you from? And second, um, ask in a few minutes, I'll introduce Katie Ann. So at this point, click on another person's icon and uh, start talking to them. Okay, so one more person in, um, in these rooms. And it's, it's interesting because we actually have two different rooms. And one of the things that you can do is if you, um, if you look up on the uh, screen, uh, you you can move to another room, but um, it looks like there's enough participants in each room for everybody to uh, to communicate with each other. So um, what we're going to be doing at one section, or maybe possibly two sections in tonight's presentation, is that uh, after Katie Ann does some of her presentation, she's going to ask you to form groups. Um, you're going to discuss uh, some question that she's going to ask you in the groups, and you're going to, and then uh, four minutes, she's going to bring everybody back together into the classroom, and she's going to bring a couple, one person at a time, or a few of you up on stage to talk about what you talked about in your groups. And I hope that uh, when she asks you, that you raise your hand. But for but now, I just want to introduce Katie Ann a little bit. Um, she's a national present present presenter on education technology. She's founder of the Google Plus Group Augment, Augmented Reality for Educators. She writes a blog, Diary of a Techie Chick, which is a great blog, and she's a teacher. So I'm going to uh, stop my broadcast. Um, I'll, I'll find her in the rooms, and then I'm going to bring her up 
podcast. And um, I, I may come back a little bit later. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, hopefully, my sound sounds OK. And if I talk too fast, I get really excited when I talk about augmented reality. Just tell me to slow down. And make sure if you have questions that you click that little button and ask Mitch, and he will um, relay the question back to me to see a different kind of reality. Um, I love augmented reality. I love that it's interactive and it is mind blowing for the kids. And um, the different things that you can do with augmented reality um, it has just started. We have three dimensional objects going into things. We have color sheets that you can color and it picks up your colors and you can interact with the, uh, the creature or the character that you've colored. We have flashcards that are interactive. We have um, uh, science element blocks that are interactive. We even have a spaceship or space satellites from NASA that can zoom in and spin around and um, explore. Um, there's different apps that already have pre-made triggers. Um, there's a company called Color and um, that has color sheets that kids can color. There's um, Cromville. And they have different um, scenarios um, with their color sheets that you can color. Um, and there's also now Color Alive. And um, that has um, four different themes of color sheets that can be used. And what I like to do with the color sheets is I like to use a writing prompt um, to give the kids um, a character to think about while they're writing. And that's how I kind of start the writing project. I hand out different color sheets and tell them, and you know, while you're coloring, what kind of life did this character have? Um, what kind of day did he have? What's their different characteristics? What are they like? And then they have to go write um, about their character. And once their writing's done, then I let them use the app to see what magical thing it does. And then they have to go back and rewrite. Um, Go back and rewrite um, the story according to uh, what happened during their experience with the augmented reality. This is kind of teaches kids how to do rewrite and also um, how to help with their creative writing. Looks like our slides aren't going to advance, but we'll just continue on. Um, Technology is great when it works, right? And um, so the three main ones right now that have the color sheets, and there's more out there. If you do a search um, for augmented reality in the App Store, you'll find the different apps that, that offer augmented reality. That's how I found the color in the Cromville. Um, for the little kids, there's flashcards. Um, they have shape ones. They have alphabets, dinosaurs, colors. Um, I do know the shape and colors ones cost, but the alphabet and the dinosaurs um, are free. And there's also a, a space one. And you just scan the little flashcard, and, and that is a great interactive, especially for the little guys, the little preschool um, kids. They love it. They think it's amazing that this little 3D animal pops out of the flashcard. Um, just that with... Um, I gave all those to my preschool teachers, and they use those in center times. And it's a great um, way for the kids to learn the alphabet, and they really love the dinosaurs. Another um, pre-made trigger are the uh, NASA um, 3D, and that's uh, one trigger, and it has a whole bunch of different um, spacecraft or satellites. Um, the kids can interact with those. They'll give them information about them. Um, they can zoom in, spin them around. Um, and it's really great for a, a center for a school. Um, it's a great interactive um, way to get information and to explore those um, satellites because, you know, they're up in space and we don't get to see those other than pictures. So the kids really love that. And then um, the 
augmented um, science or elements blocks from Daiquiri that's made those. Those um, are six faces, and each face, um, when you scan them, will give you that element. So kids get to hold the element, and then if you combine the ones that um, have a chemical or have a reaction, then they'll make that compound. Like for example, if you put hydrogen, oxygen together, again, your blocks are going to have hold water. Um, the kids really like to explore and see which elements um, go together to make the different compounds. They do offer the paper versions, and I have all of these um, triggers, these free ones, loaded on my resource page, so you can go there and just print them off. I try to keep everything in one place, um, so it's one-stop shop for my teachers. If I find something new, I try to add it as quickly as possible. And I also have the link in the um, group, the Google group, so you can um, that and get all these triggers. And what I would like to do, since I've been talking about um, pre-made triggers, and I know some of you are on here that have already started using those, I would like you to get in small groups and talk about ways that you can um, use these pre-made triggers um, in your classroom. And I'll give you a couple minutes, and I'll bring you back, and we'll um, talk about it. So I'm not the only one just talking today. I don't want just kids to scan color pages. I want them to create augmented reality. So um, there's different tools out there that will help you make augmented rea reality, like Erasm. Um, Daiquiri has a 4D studio. Um, Layer has one. And um, I just learned that um, AugVat also has one for teachers um, where you can have your trigger image and then have um, different augmented parts added to it. Um, that's what I want the kids to do. I want them to take an original artwork or original image that they've made, of taken a picture of, um, taken a picture of a diorama or a sign that they made, and then I want them to add augmented um, elements to it, either being a video, um, 3D model, uh, take you to a website. I want kids to be in control of creating these things. They make so many amazing things that they need to show it off and do it in a fun way. Um, my sixth graders, I have them make um, their name, their name and um, Greek letters, and then we put augmented the sign, and they have their um, video that they made for their green screen project. So when they scan their sign, their video comes up. Plus, they make a fake book um, about their Greek god. So we have their video, we have their fake book, we have um, a presentation if they decide to make a presentation all built in. So when they scan it, I get those elements, and the kids really like it because. When you walk in the hall, all you see are the name tags, and then you just see all these people scanning them to see what, what's there, to see what the kids have learned. And that actually is their test. Um, instead of a, a test that they have to take, um, they have to create these things for me, prove that they know about ancient Greece. Um, one of the tools I use to create augmented reality is the 4D Studio with Daiquiri. Um, for teachers, and they just released it in April, it is free for teachers and students, um, which, you know, is the price I can afford. Um, you do have to register with them to get an account, and once you um, go to their website and you go to Studio, um, it's going to say Get Started if you don't have an account, and you're going to use the education one. Um, you are limited to 25 targets. Um, in storage, and I have to delete some of mine every once in a while so that I don't go over my 25. But you apply um, a day or two, they will um, you'll get an email saying congrats, and you can log in and get started. Um, these are some of the projects that I'm working on, or that I've actually saved. These are the ones I want to keep. Um, I often do my business cards, so when they scan my business card, um, and I'll give you an example of what it looks like. This is my business card, and each one of these little boxes is an augmented um, element. So when they scan the front of my business card, you're going to get um, a slideshow of me, 
Um, a link to my website, a link to my Twitter, a link to my podcast, a link to my blog. So it's all interactive. And um, when you and when I pass these out and people scan them, all the information is at their fingertips, literally, and they just have to touch to go to my different things. And I've done that with the front and the back of my business card. But if you know how to click, copy, and paste, you and your kids can and um, create augmented projects. And it's really, really easy. Um, all you do is add content, um, which is a plus sign. You're going to, it's going to ask you a couple questions. It's going to want to know if your project's going to be like a publication, um, like a billboard, a poster, or a mail mailer. A publication, they tell me, it's like a magazine. It's going to scan the image, and it's not going to hold on to it because you're flipping the page and you got to scan another one. Um, a billboard, that's something that um, is, you know, quite huge. So if it's a, like a larger project, you might want to choose billboard. A uh, poster is what it is, um, just because it's simple. You're going to click Next. You are going to... Um, either drag and drop your picture, or if you've already uploaded to their library, you can click from the upload. We are working on um, a child labor project, so I'm going to build one um, of those projects for you. If you click on your picture that you want, it's going to um, show up, and then you're going to say next. You can, with their, pro with their program, if somebody that you know is art, having a you can work on this project together, you just have to find them. And then the, the people that you've given access to can work on the project with you without you know, them logging onto your account. OK, it's going to upload. And when it's ready, it's going to say ready. And it's going to give you the design button in the middle, designer button. Um, you click that, and that's when you can start adding your AR elements. You're going to get this workspace. Um, it's really easy to build these AR ele elements. You're going to have experience over here. You can have a 3D model. You can even do um, what they call 4D, where it has other um, parts to the 3D. You can um, do upload a video, you can do a YouTube, Vimeo, you can um, do a button, a picture, a slideshow, a GIF, uh, you can link, you can do sound. And if you can drag and drop, you can add these elements. So um, I'm going to do a slideshow. I'm going to drag it, drop it. I'm going to put it where I want it. And over here, it's going to ask you what pictures do you want for this gallery. Again, you can drag and drop, or you can go get a your desktop or their library if you've already uploaded them. These are the pictures I want in the slideshow. Um, you can choose how long of seconds you want it um, to delay. I'm going to go 10 seconds. You can tell it to allow, allow swipe. So if somebody um, is interacting with your image, you, they could swipe the picture to advance it or not, depending on what you want. You can change the color. Um, so now my pictures are loaded. I'm going to also want a link to a web that they're going to get information from. We're going to use this as a center. Um, and the kids um, will be able to click on the website and go there. And they do have some standard buttons over here. If you click on standard, um, it's going to ask you which one do you want? And this is going to be a website, so I'm going to click the link one. You can also upload your own icons um, and use those as buttons. And I'm going to go to this child labor public education project website that has the information I want. I'm going to copy the link. And then I'm going to paste it in the window so it's going to redirect when touched to that link. Okay, so I have uploaded my slideshow. I have my link to my website. And you know what? I want to add a video. So I like to add a what they call chapters. And you'll notice it has a one right here. This is my first chapter. 
And if you have the click on the plus sign, you're going to get a second chapter. And um, because the videos, when you load them, they automatically play. I like to put them on the second chapter um, just so that I can have my slideshow in my links there first. When the kids are done, they can click to the next chapter and the video will play. So I'm going to choose YouTube. And this is so easy to do. Um, this is the video I want, the child labor in America. So I'm going to go to it. Sure, I pause it. I'm going to get the link, copy it, go back to Daiquiri, and it's going to say the URL link over here in the window, so you're going to paste it. Voila. Now I need to tell um, the kids to go to the next chapter so they'll get the video. So they have the next button, so I'm going to drag my button again like I did for the link. I'm going to make it smaller. It over here in the corner. Grab the standard button they've already loaded for me, the next one. And I'm going to say tell it to go to the next chapter. So over here's chapter. We'll say chapter two. So when clicked, it's going to go to the next one, the next page. So my AR experience, and I've done this in what, a couple, less than five minutes. I've uploaded three pictures. I have a link to a website. I have a link to the next page or chapter, and I have a YouTube video that I want the kids to watch. Always save your work and save it often. They have this recognition quality with images. Um, you want it one to be unique. If you load an image that's already been augmented in the Daiquiri Studio, it won't let you use it. So you want a unique image. You want one with a lot of contrast. You want one with a lot of defined um, lines because it'll make it um, better for it to scan. And if Daiquiri Studio likes, it's going to rate it up. That's the best. If your image is poor, it's going to be a one. That means you might not get a good scan each time. So make sure you're when you are uh, making trigger images that you one make them with a lot of con or have them with a lot of contrast, um, with a lot of details, with a lot of lines, because it just makes um, it scan a lot better and you get a better result. Okay, so I've saved my work. It's ready. Now I need to publish it. Once you publish it, it becomes live, and then it becomes um, ready to use. And it doesn't take very long. Oh, it's still waiting. Okay. While it is waiting, Mitch, I think we should do a small group um, discussion about what kind of trigger um, images that we can make or our students can make. So if you'll get into small groups, um, we'll see. This is going to work. And then um, there was one question from Ian uh, that who asked if the answer to that. That is a good question, and I wish they would have joined me. I am, did invite them. Um, I do not know for sure. That's why I would like kids to make their own original work so it's theirs. Um, but you're using their product. Um, I don't really have a good answer for that. That's a good question. Okay, and then Yara also had a question. Um, someone mentioned something about uh, 360 interactive video. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I was probably down at that point. <laughs> so okay. uh, do you have an answer to that? Um, uh, I have know? not used three, 360 um, interactive videos. I have not loaded those, and I don't think the studio can do that. I know it can do 3D objects and 4D experience, but maybe that 360 will go in that 4D. Um, I just now got into the, getting my 3D um, images to work in their studio. Okay. okay. Well, I'm actually, you know something, what I might do is I might leave you up. And okay. um, Sarah has a question. And I, if. Um, the, oh, you does have a video camera. So I'm going to stop my broadcast, and I'm going to bring Sarah up to ask her to have her um, ask you a question. One minute. 
Okay. Hi, Sarah. Sarah. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just wondering how Daiquiri's support is with the integrated program. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, companies vary um, and how they well, support um, the well, um, As soon as I have a problem, you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions? Hi, Ian. I can't hear you, Ian. So I was curious if there was a limit to how much uh, video can be um, for each trigger mid. They have a limit on your account, just this on your account total. Um, it's I think it's one gig for the account. So if you had a huge video, um, you may need to talk with them and ask them. Uh, And are the accounts only for teachers or can students that But they have to be able to verify their account and their email. Uh, if your school is like mine and they block third party email accounts, um, they can't create an account. I'm good. Zachary is a great platform. Um, and I just wanted to let people know that as far as we have, with, we have a similar from our company that we do free teach connect we teach connect that there is no limit on their video size or the number of images that they create or generate so just throwing it out there letting people know that um my company does do that as well and um you know if anybody if they have questions that maybe on the technical side of the augmented reality i would answer if i could and Adam is aug that if you um, didn't catch that. And it um, actually has some really good um, content built in, and it's broken up just just fine. I could find everything I needed um, with the seventh and eighth grade. So far, I haven't touched sixth grade yet. Oh, you didn't get to it yet. Okay. And hi, Mitch. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I hope uh, if if you if I brought you down too fast, just raise your hand again, and I'll and I'll bring you back. Um, do you still want me to bring you back down, or do you want to uh, move on and uh, put the slides back um, up? I think. And and you may still be on screen I share. I am. I can see. You may. Um, I so if, if you don't want to get a screen share more, um, be uh, stop your screen share. No, I'm fine with the screen share. I I want um, people to get into small groups and talk about the different um, things that they can see that for their classroom. And um, I will go back and see if my image is. And um, in a second. I'm going to bring Emily up to the screen because um,
previous person on there from Augment. I, uh, not quite sure. As I understood it, there were limitless accounts um, were available that could do the same thing. Just a quick question. Thank you. Okay. Hey, um, your question is for uh, Adam? That's true, yes. And you want to, you're kind of low. You can speak up a little bit. Yes, I understood that he said that there were possibly um, uh, um, she wants to know what the limit is. Um, for student accounts to create augmented with uh, with augvat there he is did you hear the question Yes. Choose to create um, augmented reality lessons, uh, um, which uh, uh, we will be launching a student indicator. So for me, yeah, I want my students to create that uh, environment that they can. Create create their own, own uh, projects. So we would connect a 360 virtual environment and create objects um, and animated lessons. Okay. For the teachers. For the Hopefully that got right. Say that again. Is that what I hope? I think. Um, so. the, the, the thing that I would love, Katie, I, I, I just started following Katie, and I got to tell you, it is spectacular, you know, as far as her augmented reality. No, no it's so cool. cool. So, when I see people that are so involved in augmented reality, um, uh, um, did everybody get a chance to? Um, if you have some suggestions, or some ideas, you can. Your hand and, and Mitch can um, either bring you up and tell us, or you can um, tell him in the question area. Or either on the browser or on, on, on a cell phone, it's in the um, App Store or Google. Um, the app is the Star app. Um, let me see. I can Maybe I'll. Adam, can you type that up? Uh, okay. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, they um, would like Apple Store or the end. It is their um, tutoring. Yeah. 
or STAR, T E A R, augmented reality. Um, you can reach me uh, through 